If you bought every iPhone since the first one in 2007, you spent $20,600. That's the amount you put out of pocket over that time period. Now, if you bought the stock, hear me now, you took the same amount of money you spent at that time for the iPhone, and I went back and made a chart so people could see it, and bought the stock. Today, all that adds up to $206 million. So it's like, no, you know, yes, that's the real number. <laughs> that's the real number. So we just don't teach people. We, we, we don't teach people to question their limiting beliefs, and we don't teach them beliefs that empower them. So what do you believe you find evidence for? It. All right, quite an interesting idea by the man himself, Tony Robbins. Now let's take his trading strategy and put it to the test in Python. To recap the strategy, whenever Apple is releasing a new iPhone, instead of buying the phone, you are buying the stock. Technically, that's straightforward. You screen whenever an iPhone was released, what did it cost and how many shares you would have bought back then. Now the claim is, if you are doing that since the first release, your portfolio value would be 206 million US dollar. So let's test if that is actually the case. I pulled all the release dates here. So you see we're starting in 2007 when the first iPhone was released. And this is the price of the iPhone, 499 US dollar. And I'm going until 2023. Background here is the video I shared in the beginning was published in the beginning of 2024. So I assume Tony Robbins analysis goes until this release date. Now, what we need is stock prices. So we wanna know how much the Apple stock was worth on those days. So what we are going to do is to pull Apple stock prices using Y Finance here. So I'm setting up a data frame DF, use ticker on Apple to get a, an object where I can pull the stock price history, what I'm doing exactly here. And I'm starting in the beginning of 27 here when the first iPhone was released. And as I just said, I'm going until the beginning of 2024. So with that, we're getting a beautiful data frame like this containing open, high, low, close, volume, dividends, and stock splits columns here. Now, what's important here is this close column is an adjusted close column, adjusted for stock splits and dividends, which is super important in this analysis as Apple was going through a lot of stock splits. So this price here is already adjusted. Now, what you also see is that the index here containing the dates seems a bit overkill here. So we don't need minutes, we just need dates here. So I'm doing some manipulations so we only see the date and not these minutes, hours and whatsoever those values are. I just wanna have the date here. So this is the first manipulation to that data frame. I'm setting the index to just the date of that index. And I wanna have it as a, a daytime value. So I'm doing a daytime transformation with pandas to daytime here. So with that, we have a beautiful index and open high, low, close, volume, dividend, stock splits, columns here. Now we got the data frame containing 4.2K rows. So Apple stock prices back until 2007. We don't need all those rows for now. We only need those rows where we have a release date because I wanna know what was the stock price on that date so I can calculate how many shares or stocks I would have bought back then with this amount. So I'm just filtering the index of that data frame for those release dates here. Nothing more than that. So I can just check, is my index in this list of release dates? And as this is a dictionary, this, these are the keys of the dictionary. So just as a recap, dictionaries are always key value pairs and this, these are the keys, these are the values. So to get those, um, those keys, you can just screen for the keys and get the keys here. And I wanna transform them to a list. So I'm getting those as a list and I can immediately pass that to the filter here. And important also is as these are currently uh, string values. You wanna have them also as daytime values. So I'm also doing a daytime 
transformation here simply because the values in the index are also uh, daytime values here. So with that, you get a Boolean array and you can apply that on the data frame. And with that, you only get those rows where you have a release date. So this is super nice already. So you have the first release date, you have the price on that release date. And now the only thing you have to also add here. So let's actually store that somewhere. So I'm just doing a quick copy of the data frame to avoid unnecessary and super annoying error messages. So I'm just storing the df under df underscore here. And with that, I have a data frame where I have the release dates as the index and the price here. So what I need now is the amount the iPhone was costing back then. So I'm just adding a column here and I pass the values of the dictionary here. Super simple, same concept. So as before, I'm just adding a column here, just calling that amount, or I can also call that iPhone price. And then you pass the values of the dictionary, which are just the price values. And I'm also passing that as a list here. So with that, you super nicely have the amount you would have paid for the iPhone. And with that, you can super simply just calculate how many shares you would have bought back then with that amount. And that is simply amount divided by close price. So you have the amount divided by the close price. And you also store that as a column and obviously just name that shares, stocks, whatever you want to uh, call it. And with that, you have the number of shares you would have bought back then. Quick remark here. So these are, as you see, floating values and you could argue, well, I can only buy full shares. Well, today you can also buy fractional shares. If you want to be very specific and want to work with full shares, you can just do an integer conversion uh, on that column here. I'm not doing it because the difference is just too too small. So I'm not doing that, but this is how you're doing it. So you have just full shares doing an integer conversion here. But as I said, I'm keeping it as it is, assuming fractional shares as the difference. It doesn't make any difference. You can check that for yourself. And now what you just need to do is super simple. You just take the sum of the shares. So you can just calculate the sum here uh, of those shares. And then in the end, you calculate the portfolio value by simply multiplying the amount of shares. So the sum of this column with the current close price. And with that, you have your portfolio value. And that is supposed to be 206 million US dollar. All right. So you could also uh, get a time series view. So you want to have cumulative shares. So you want to know on this date, how many shares do I have in my portfolio? You could just apply a cumulative sum function here, but we are keeping it as simple as possible. So we're just taking the sum of the shares here. And with that, we're getting 741-ish shares. So you could just multiply it with the uh, uh, most recent uh, Apple, Apple stock price here. So yeah, let's just quickly check that. What is that or the stock price in the end of 2023 here. So that would be your portfolio value in the end of 2023. And that is 141,000 US dollars. All right, taking everything into account. Now, this is obviously totally different from what Tony Robbins claims, but this is your portfolio value if you would do that strategy. Now you could argue, well, maybe he means all iPhones, so meaning all storage possibilities, all iPhone Pro, iPhone Pro Max, iPhone SE, you know, everything what you can buy when Apple is releasing in your iPhone, but even, even if you quadruple those numbers, you wouldn't get close to to that value. I mean, I can I can even show it to you. I mean, we can quickly simulate that. If you take the amount and just take the amount times, let's say six, uh, that's a bit too much, I think, but five. So you buy five iPhones on every release date. 
then you calculate the shares and in the end you would have 3k shares and that would be a portfolio value of 710k US dollar so it's very very far from from the the claimed amount that's a that's a result of this just as bonus for those who are um, interested in doing that with an iterative approach so you know this is a pandas approach you're using uh, vectorized operations but you could also just loop it and i think this is also interesting to see so i'm covering it quickly here so if you want to calculate it with a loop or an iterative approach i would probably just set up a function get price pass the data frame and the date and then just uh, get a price for a given date so you just define a price here within this function and then you screen the data frame for that date and then the close and then you return this price so whenever you call this function you get a price for a given date and then you just loop through uh, through the dates here and then you just collect the number of shares here so i'm just calling that shares initialize that variable by zero and then i loop for date in iphone iPhone release data later so with that just that you that you know you you would get the the dates here if you do it uh, like this looping over a dictionary and then uh, you would just calculate a price for every iteration call this function here so in this case uh, you can you can work with with this uh, um, df underscore you can also work with the, with the initial data frame doesn't matter and then you just calculate the shares like this so you just add up and then pull the price of the iphone on a given date so in the first iteration you would get the price uh, of this uh, of, of of this date for the first iphone and you calculate divided by the price and then after the, the loop went through you have your uh, calculated shares and that is the exact same results as we got before. So 741 shares and then you multiply it with a, a, a stock price to get the portfolio value. So long story short, not even close to the 206 million US dollar, but a very, very profitable strategy. I mean, you could calculate now how much did you buy those stocks for? And that is actually not that much money i think he said something like 12 12k or so so uh well i manipulated this line now but if you just sum those uh, values up uh, you would hopefully end up something around 11 or 12k and uh, you make over 100k out of that that is a big 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 profit so it is a it would have been without a question to be very fair to tony robbins a very very good trading strategy but it is very very far away from the claimed numbers i hope you found this interesting and yeah if you did leave a like leave a comment and i'm looking forward to see you in the upcoming videos cheers bye bye